All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what is good? What is good? What is good? Of course, you know who I be. Good doc, Dr. Mike TV. Back again, once again, a story that I could not under any circumstances pass up, no matter how juicy or good it possibly could be. Now, shout out to my brother Oscar for emailing me this particular link to a um, article that I'm going to share with you guys today. I thought that it was noteworthy and ironic of sorts. <laughs> the timing, of course, uh, in reference to when I received the email and the time that I'm bringing it to you guys today. So give me a moment. I'm going to share my screen with you real quick so that you guys can share in and or see exactly what I am seeing because, guys, it's about to get as juicy as juicy could be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Let's go ahead and knock it out. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. Marriage for green card scam, guys. Six Filipinos are arrested and held here in the United States of America. Um, this article was posted on April 10th. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you guys. The link for the article will be in the description area below for you guys to be able to read it your own uh, at your own time if you want to. But uh, we definitely going to get into this one. So apparently this marriage for green card scam has six Filipinos getting arrested and held here in the United States. Now, is this something that is new to us? No, right? I think that this is something that's been going on for quite a few years. Um, I personally do not know anybody who has participated and or, you know, been a part of a marriage for a green card scam. But let's be honest, man, you got some Filipinos that really, really want to come to the country, live in the country, stay in the country, because of course, they look at the United States as the land of opportunity and things like that. So I'm not going to sit here and act as if I am oblivious to it, or I'm not going to sit here and act as if I'm going to sit here and act like it probably hasn't happened quite a few times before this time. Just so happened a couple of Filipinos got caught. All right, so let's go ahead and lock in real quick. So it says in L.A., six Filipino immigrants and five other accomplices have been indicted by federal authorities for arranging at least 400 fake marriages and making millions. We're not talking about pesos, ladies and gentlemen, millions of dollars for their business and securing green cards illegally for willing clients. All right. These weddings were not love stories. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of that later on when we actually do our K-1 visa process video. But, you know, they ask you questions about your background, how long you've known each other, and they really want to know how you guys met. That's pretty much one of the questions that they ask you in reference to, you know, trying to figure out how real or authentic the relationship is. So here for them to highlight it and quote it right here where it says that uh, these weddings were not love stories here. I'm sorry, at the bottom. Um, that's basically one of the defining factors of what gets visas approved and disapproved. And of course, the evidence that you share as a result. But um, it says that they were not love stories, according to the Massachusetts U.S. attorney, who announced the indictments on Thursday in Boston, where one of the group's alleged victims lived. These individuals committed multiple frauds in the United States government with explicit goal of circumventing immigration laws, basically doing everything that they can to get around the laws that um, are set for immigrants and, and you know, for people to uh, immigrate to the uh, United States and places like it. They did everything they could to kind of get around the rules. I have known Filipinos and I've had known people, not even just Filipinos, that actually get, um, how can I say this? They've gotten visit not visitors passes, a visa, visitors visa or some shit like that. I don't, I forgot what it's called. It's, I'm drawing a blank, y'all. But they would come into the country and while they were here, they would get married, right? I've seen that happen before. Not saying that it's happened personally with somebody that I've known, but I've seen that happen before. So that could be a way of circumventing immigration laws as well. Again, they'll probably back check, fact check, and do their due diligence. At least you would hope the United States government <laughs> would do their due diligence. But sometimes, you know, it's probably half-assed. Let's keep it a bug. Um, she identified the group's ringleader as... I think that's Marcelito Benitez, 48, a Filipino national who operated an employment agency in L.A. as a front for arranged sham marriages that charged $20,000 to $30,000 in cash per client. 
If you do your math, ladies and gentlemen, right here, if you do your math, Ben, that is eight million U.S. dollars that they have accrued as a result of their marriages. 20,000, 30,000 per client. On the bottom end, if they charged all 400 client clients $20,000, they at least made a quick eight mil. Whew. My girl was making me watch Grey's Anatomy the other day, matter of fact. And there was a girl on the show who got $8.7 million, And that's why that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Anyways, if you know what Grey's Anatomy is, you know. But um, it says the other Filipinos identified as conspirators of Benitez were some other people. I don't want to care. You, you can read the article. You'll see the names. Um, the five other accomplices were identified as more names. <laughs> Um, and then it says these individuals were known to have acted as brokers who recruited American citizens willing to marry foreigners who wanted to get so-called green cards via this scheme. A green card or a permanent resident ID shows that the holder is allowed to stay and work permanently in the United States. So they found people who were willing to participate. And maybe they gave them a couple of dollars, you know, just to go ahead and marry this person. And then I guess if it, you know, maybe down the line, they divorce maybe, or I don't know. They're not really telling it yet, but maybe we'll get into it. But it looks as though either they stayed married or down the line a couple of years or so, maybe the relationship ceased to exist, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, of the 11 defendants, eight were arrested in um, L.A. by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, charged with conspiracy to commit marriage and immigration fraud. All of the 11 accused face a maximum of five years in jail if convicted. Five years? Eight million dollars? Huh. I don't know. You got to split that up amongst people. I was trying to do my math to see if it was worth the money to go to chip, but they probably freezed assets unless they were smart enough to send that money to the Philippines. <laughs> if they were smart enough, I damn sure wouldn't keep any money. And I'm not saying that I'm into anything illegal, but if they were smart enough, it would not be in the United States bank. That would be dumb. If I know that this was something that I attained illegally, why would you leave it in a bank? That's all I'm saying. But that's another story for another day. Uh, marriage fraud is a serious crime, y'all, that threatens the integrity of our nation's lawful immigration system. That was what the quote was by the U.S. Attorney's Office. And it does, man. It does make you look bad. You know, it's unfortunate, but there are a lot of people that would find to uh, try to find ways to get around the law. I mean, what do you expect? The conspirator, she said that the alleged wrongdoing was an affront to our nation's tradition of welcoming immigrants and prospective citizens. You know, I do have to say this, though. This is one thing that I've been thinking about because, again, guys, me and my young lady, like you already know, we're going through the process now. And, you know, we've already gotten her here. <laughs> but the thing is, there's still a lot more stuff that needs to be done, you know, to get the green card and all of that other jazz, social security number. There's a lot of things that still need to be done. And I'm kind of feeling like situations like this, guys, is almost making it difficult for people who are actually in authentic relationships to actually bring their significant other to their home country, which in this situation would be the United States, right? It just seems as though it's going to make it extremely difficult for them to even bring their young ladies, or I believe the process would be highly scrutinized. That's the best way for me to put it. I believe that there's going to be a lot more eyes on it and people are going to start probably doing the screenings a little bit more rigorous and difficult. And again, like I said, in our K-1 visa process video, my young lady will tell you the process of being interviewed. I think she had to be interviewed twice, one by the embassy, and then there was another um, interview process she had to go through after she finished the uh, embassy interview. So, you know, sometimes these people ask very rigorous questions and questions that you'd be like, well, damn, I didn't think that they were going to ask me that. So, you know, I think it's going to make it difficult if you do want to bring your young lady to the United States. But like I said, as long as your relationship is authentic, I don't really think it should be an issue and all questions should be able to be answered, you know, uh, hopefully to the best of her ability because they don't interview us. They just interview her. Right. And again, what's that? That's how much it was so far. I'm sorry. y'all. I'm looking at shit. <laughs> another video for another day. Yo, my young lady is just handing me. What is that? The price of it? Mm -hmm. Oh, so far. That's how much was spent so far. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, I'll put that in the next video. I'll give them the. That includes the five. That includes the five hundred also from. Yeah. Huh? It does or does not. So again, guys, we're gonna break down the prices of the visa process and how much money was spent up to date in a later video, y'all. Just give me a minute. But I want to knock this one out. But yeah, it could be it twenty thousand dollars, right? That is true. And we didn't even pay a tenth of that. If you want to know, if you want to get an idea, we didn't even pay a tenth of what they were charging these people for these marriage scams. So I'm sorry we got a little sidetracked. But anyways, like I was saying, um, let's see. Anything else in here worth talking about? All of these people. There was a $2,000 commission referral. You guys can read it if you want to. I think that's pretty much all that I want to cover in this situation. Let's see. In 2020, the Philippines was the sixth largest country of birth of new lawful permanent residents or green card recipients in the United States. So six countries, six, six large, six countries, six largest country to come into the United States and get green cards. Okay. Um, 707,000 persons who obtained lawful permanent resident status, 25,000 were born in the Philippines. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. I think that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and stop sharing y'all. But I just had to drop that one for you real quick because the timing of it was super ironic. That's the reason why I laugh at it because the timing of this particular article, shout out to my boy for sending it to me, was just ironic, right? And as a result, guys, like I said, man, if you're going to do it, take it serious. Yes, I understand there's a lot of guys who aren't going to participate in the K-1 visa process or the marriage visa process to bring their young lady to the United States. It's okay. You do what you do. But I just wanted to at least talk about it, you know, because I thought this was definitely a story worth sharing. If you guys enjoyed this video, guys, you already know what to do, man. Make sure you drop a like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe, make sure you notify for all the other content the Good Doc has to offer. Y'all know what time it is, man. It's time for the Good Doc to go and get the getting. So with that being said, Good Doc is officially out at at least knuckle by 11, which means I am going now. Uh, bye bye. As always, love you guys. Sincerely do. Bye bye. Peace.